Amen. Praise Jesus. Father God, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor this morning. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up and getting us here, Father God. We thank you for safe travel for those that are coming in this morning, Father God. Thank you, Lord, that you strengthen our pastor for all the running around that he's doing this morning. Keep him safe, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we thank you for your word that's going to go forth today. Heaven and earth might pass away, but your word will never, ever pass away. And, Father God, we thank you that we have ears to hear your word and spirit to receive and contain that word, Father God, so that we can live victoriously here on earth. And for that, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, saints. We're going to start talking this morning about the favor of God. The favor of God. Psalms 5 and 12 says, For thou wilt bless the righteous with favor with thy compassion as with the shield. The New King James Version says, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor you will surround him as with a shield. See, that's why we can say that we are blessed and highly favored because God says it. And we can say about ourselves what God says about us. Amen? Amen. What is the meaning of favor? Favor begins with a reverential fear and respect for the Lord. The scripture says that the Lord will bless the righteous, those that are in right standing with him. How? Through the blood of Jesus. Those that love him and respect him, God will bless them with favor. Amen? Amen. So wherever you go, you should declare that the favor of God surrounds me like a shield. Because it does. Job said when you decree a thing, it shall be established. Amen? Amen? There are several definitions for the word favor. Favor is defined as something that is helpful, advantageous or considerate, done or granted freely as a gesture of goodwill. Favor is also to increase the chances for success. See, we want, don't want to fail in the things that we do. Right. So we need the favor of God. Whatever we're doing, on our job, Amen. or in Amen. our homes, or in our neighborhoods, whatever we do for the Lord, we want to be successful in it. And the favor of God ensures us that we will be. Amen? Amen. Favor also means to show special consideration to someone. You ever have people say, I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> I tell them it's a favor of God. Yeah. Favor also means to look upon with approval or liking. All of these definitions show that having the favor of God is a good thing. Amen. Really, it's a great thing. Amen? Amen. Amen. God's favor assures us of success. Amen. God's favor also gives us preferential treatment. Why? Because God wants the best for his children. Amen? Amen. Psalm 84 and 11 says, God will not withhold any good thing from those that walk uprightly. See, when we obey him, he will not hold anything back from us. Amen? Amen? Anything we need to serve him, he will equip us to do it. Whatever he calls you to do, he equips you to do it. Amen? Amen. Psalm 58 and 19 says, God daily loads us with benefits. Yes, yes. Benefits a good thing. good thing. He loans us with good things every single day. Yes. Another version says, each day he carries us in his arms. Yes. Get an image of that. Yes. Father God is carrying you around in his arms. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory be to God. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. The God of the universe, the God that created heaven and earth, carries us in his arms. It's a win-win situation with God. Why? Because we have favor with our God. Now let's look at some of the benefits of favor. The favor of God produces supernatural increase and promotion. When it comes to increase and promotion, I am reminded of Joseph. Joseph's father, Jacob, loved him more than his other children because he had him in his old age. Genesis 37, verses 3 through 4. Now Israel, who is Jacob, loved jo Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. Verse 4. And when his brethren saw their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to, to him. 
Verse 4 in the New Living Translation says, But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't even say a kind word to him. Mm -hmm. That's a sad commentary when you can't even say a kind word to your brother yep. or your sister. Yep. Hatred and jealousy are destructive emotions that will hurt or even destroy relationships. See, when Jacob only made a coat for Joseph, it showed his favoritism toward Joseph. Treating one child better than another will often bring division, strife, and envy between the children and the parents. Yes, children are free. They can see that you're treating one better than the other. Amen? Amen. That's something parents should never do. James 3.16 says, Where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Amen. Amen. Now, Joseph's brothers were already jealous of him. And when their father gave him the coat, they got even madder with Joseph. Amen. Even if a parent has a favorite child, they should treat all their children the same. Later on, Joseph had a dream. In the dream, his brothers bowed down to him. Now, this is one dream that Joseph should have kept to himself. Amen? <laughs> Joseph made the mistake of telling his brothers about the dream, and they got even madder with him. Then Joseph had another dream where not only his brothers, but his father also bowed down before him. Mm -hmm. His mother, Rachel, had died along the way. Now, Rachel died while giving birth to Benjamin. She had been barren for a long time. But then uh, she found God blessed her to have children. She had two boys, Joseph and Benjamin. And those were the only two that she had for Jacob. But you got to realize that, that uh, uh, Jacob loved Rachel more than he loved Leah. Because he had worked for uh, Rachel for seven years and they tricked him and made him and gave him Leah. So he had to work another seven years for Rachel. And you know what? I often wonder how Leah felt knowing that she wasn't really one. You know, it had to be kind of hurting to her. But anyhow, this might partially explain why Jacob loved the children from Rachel more than he loved the children from Leo. Amen? Now, everybody in the family was mad with Joseph, even though his dream would come true. See, sometimes when God reveals his plans for you, and when you share them with other people, they get mad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, some folks don't want you to prosper, right. but always remember that God does. The Lord is on your side. Amen. Mm -hmm. Third John and two says, The love I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even in your soul prosper. Amen. Mm -hmm. God wants us to prosper. Yes. Amen. Psalm thirty five twenty seven says, The Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Mm -hmm. And the good news is we are no longer servants. We are children of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. He blesses us so that we can be a blessing to others. Amen. Amen. See, if God can get the money through you, he'll get the money to you. Mm -hmm. But if your fists are balled up and you're keeping it all for yourself, you ain't going to get nothing. You gotta, your hands got to be open to receive. Amen. 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 It's part of our covenant mm -hmm. to be blessed by God. So we're going to look at Joseph here in Genesis 37 verses 12 and 14, 12 through 14. Then his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem, and Israel, who was Jacob, said to Joseph, Are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So he said to him, Here I am, verse 14. Then he said to him, Please go and see if it is well with your brothers and well with the flock, and bring back word to me. So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron, and he went to Shechem. Jacob sent Joseph to look for his brothers and bring him back a report on how they were doing. But when the brothers saw Joseph coming, they devised a wicked plan against him to kill him. All because Joseph had a dream. All because of jealousy because he was the father's favorite. Mm -hmm. James 3.16 says that envy and strife equal confusion and every evil word. Now down to verse 18 it says, Now when they saw him, Joseph, afar off, even before he came near them, they conspired against him to kill him. Jealousy made them want to kill their own brother. Mm -hmm. 
Jealousy is an evil and destructive force. If you recognize jealousy in your life, get rid of it quickly. Amen? Amen. And you start doing this by spending time in the Word of God. You do this by being quick to forgive and walking in love. Amen. That's how you get rid of all those evil feelings and emotions. Amen? Amen. The story of Joseph continues through our chapters 37 and 39. But to give you a brief summary of what happened to Joseph, instead of killing Joseph, his brother sold him into slavery. Joseph was sold to a very rich and powerful Egyptian uh, officer named Potiphar. Now, Potiphar was the captain of the army of the king of Egypt. Rich families like Potiphar had large and beautiful homes that were two and three stories tall. They used gold utensils and ate out of gold dishes. You know what? My aunt, uh, a few years ago for Christmas, gave me some gold silverware. Yep. Hallelujah. <laughs> we are royalty, aren't we? Yes, we are. We're, we're children of the most high God. Yeah. Their houses were very elegant and beautiful. Potiphar made Joseph the overseer of his house. Why? Because he could already see God's favor on Joseph. See, even when you are a servant, even if you may be doing what some people call a menial job, you know, a job that don't nobody else want to do. When the Lord's favor is on you, you will prosper. Amen? Amen. And other people be able to see that favor on you. For instance, say you and someone that's more qualified than you apply for the same job, amen, but you got the job. That's the favor of God. Amen. They may have better qualifications. They may have a PhD, amen, but you got G-O-D. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's the favor of God. Glory to God. Thank you. Genesis 39, verses 2 through 4. The Lord, the Lord was with Joseph, and he was success. He was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. See, you can be a slave, but if God is with you, you'll be a successful person. Right. Verse three, and his master saw. Say saw. Saw. His master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Amen. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Mm -hmm. Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he had he put under his authority. Glory be to God. <laughs> because of Joseph, part of his house ran smoothly. Mm -hmm. He prospered greatly. Why? Because the favor of God was on Joseph. Mm -hmm. Potiphar wasn't the only one paying attention to Joseph. His wife had been noticing how handsome and well-built Joseph was. See, that's the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh right. kicking in. Amen? Mm -hmm. Had she been a godly woman, right. she would have arrested that right then. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. She soon went from just looking at Joseph to lusting after him. Right. She tried to seduce him, but Joseph refused to sleep with her. Amen. Amen. Joseph was a man of integrity. Yes. As a matter of fact, when she grabbed his clothes and tried to make him sleep with her, he ran from her. Yes. If somebody tried to get you to do something wrong, run. Right. Run. Amen. If they are insistent, if they are demanding and trying to force you to do something, run. Mm -hmm. If someone tries to entice you or get you, get you to stand against God, you better run right. and run quickly. Amen? Don't mm -hmm. even give it a second thought. Nope. Mm -hmm. Just run. Just run. First Corinthians 6, chapter verse 18 says, Run from sexual sin. Amen. Mm -hmm. No other sin is so, clear, so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Yes, it is. As Christians, our bodies don't even belong to us. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. They belong to God. Right. We have to honor God with our body because our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Right. Mm -hmm. Joseph honored God when he ran from Potiphar's wife. He told her, I can't do this wickedness and sin against God. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. That's integrity. That's having a reverential fear and respect for the things of God. And you know what? Joseph could have reasoned his way into sin. Mm -hmm. He could have. He could have said, you know what? 
My brother sold me into slavery. They don't like me anyhow. They're jealous of me. And here I am, a slave in this man's house. I deserve this woman. He could have reasoned his way into sin. Amen. But Joseph was an honorable man. He was a man full of integrity and reverential fear of God. Amen. Now, Potiphar's wife lied on Joseph and said he had tried to rape her. Since Joseph went to sleep with her, she decided to punish him. Naturally, Potiphar took his wife's side and had Joseph put into prison. Joseph was thrown into prison for a crime that he didn't commit. And even today, I see on the news every now and then of men and women being released from prison for something they didn't even do. Right. One man has spent 20 some years yeah. in prison for something he didn't even do. He can't get that time back. Nope. Amen. Yeah. That time's gone. Oh. Amen. Yeah. Potiphar knew that Joseph was an honorable man. That's why he had put him in charge of his whole house. I have often wondered if Potiphar knew in his heart that his wife was lying on Joseph. Because if he didn't trust Joseph, he wouldn't have put Joseph over his whole house, would he? Right. He trusted Joseph. He knew the Lord was with Joseph. And I just believe in his heart. He knew that woman was lying. Right. Yeah. But even in prison, the favor of God was with Joseph. Yeah. God's favor doesn't leave you because of negative things happening in your life. Amen. He said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? His favor is always there. The Lord gave Joseph favor with the warden of the prison. Mm -hmm. Everywhere Joseph went, he had favor. Mm -hmm. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners. Okay. God's favor gave Joseph supernatural increase and promotion. Mm -hmm. The warden didn't even have to worry about anything because Joseph took care of everything because the Lord was with Joseph. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when God is with you, his favor surrounds you like a shield. Mm -hmm. Continually. Amen. Joseph's brother called him the dreamer yeah. because he would have dreams and tell them about his dreams. Now it's ironic that his dreams played a part in his being in prison, but they also played a part in his being in the palace. Right. We're going to see that in a few minutes. God can take what someone meant for evil and turn it around to your good. When I, when I think of that, I think about Haman who built the gallows yep. to hang Mordecai on, and he ended up getting hung yep. on those same gallows. God turned that thing around. Amen? Mm -hmm. God favor took Joseph from the prison to the palace. It can take you from poverty to prosperity. God's favor can take you from sickness to divine health. It can take you from the Christ house to the church house. Amen. Amen. God says it's awful. God yeah. says it's better than money. Yes, it is. While in prison, Joseph had interpreted the dreams of two of the prisoners. One was Pharaoh's cupbearer, and the other was Pharaoh's baker. <coughs> he told them that the baker would be killed and the cupbearer would be restored to the king's palace. Now, I can only imagine that the baker wasn't too thrilled <laughs> knowing that his head was going to be cut off. Joseph asked the cupbearer to put in a good word for him with the king when he returned to the palace. But for two years, he forgot all about Joseph. When Pharaoh had some troubling dreams, the cupbearer finally remembered his promise to Joseph, and he told the king about him. So the king sent for Joseph and asked him to interpret his dreams. Joseph interpreted the king's dreams and warned him that a famine would be in Egypt. He told the king to store up food for the years of famine that were coming. The king was so thankful that he made Joseph the ruler of Egypt. Joseph, Joseph is steadily being elevated. Why? Because of the favor of God. Amen? He was made the second highest man in Egypt. God's favor will give you supernatural increase and promotion. Yes. Amen. You might be the last one hired on your job and before you know it, you're the CEO of the company. Because of the favor of God. Amen. As a matter of fact, Joseph was not higher than Potiphar who had put him in prison. Right. Right. And that's favor. <laughs> the favor of God will lift you above your enemies. Let's look at what David says in Psalms 27, verses 5 through 6. And it says, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his provision. In the secret of his tabernacle he shall hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. 
and now shall my head be lifted above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yay! I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hallelujah! The fame of God will lift you above your enemies. Proverbs 16 and 7 says, When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Amen? Amen. God's favor lifted Joseph above his brothers, mm-hmm. and God's favor lifted him above partisans. Amen. Mm-hmm. What an awesome blessing knowing that we are surrounded by the favor of God. Yeah. Yeah, I tell people all the time, I'm blessed and highly favored. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what I look like. Right. I let the word dwell in me richly. Amen. Amen. Joseph's dreams about his brothers came to pass. Yes. Why? Because it was in God's plan. Yes. And if it's in God's plan, it will come to pass. Yes. God has wonderful plans for our lives. If you believe, mm-hmm. they will come to pass for you too. Yes, Joseph's whole family did have to come to Egypt and bow down before him because he was next to the king in authority. He went from Hebrew slave to head of his master, Potiphar's house, and ended up being the governor of Egypt. Mm -hmm. (laughs) God's favor gives you supernatural increase and promotion. Glory be to God. Now another interesting point is that Joseph's name in Hebrew means may God add. See, he was destined to prosper. Because his name meant prosperity. Mm -hmm. Unlike today, most names back then had meaning. Today, I see people naming their children after cars. (laughs) <laughs> I, know, I know one woman who's dead now, but her name was Mercedes. Mercedes. And she never owned them. I don't know why they named her that. She never owned the Mercedes, amen? <laughs> but back in the day when they named their children, they had meaning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Joseph had a personal relationship with God that allowed him to survive and prosper where most people would have caved in yeah. and quit. Yeah. He was betrayed and deserted by his family. He was sold into slavery. He was exposed to sexual temptation, lied on, mistreated, and put in prison for doing the right thing. Yes, but God, hallelujah, but God, hallelujah. God covered Joseph and surrounded him with favor. That same favor of God surrounds us yes. like a shield. Thank now, another thing that the favor of God, favor of God does is restore what the enemy has stolen from us. Yes. John 10.10 10 tells us that the, that the thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm-hmm. Satan is the thief. Yes. Proverbs 6.31 says when the thief is found, he has to return or restore sevenfold what he has stolen. Right. Mm-hmm. Has the devil stolen some things from you? Well, our God is in the restoration yes. business. Yes. And he got to bring them back. Yeah. Amen. He's going to bring you your stuff, Hallelujah. your money, yes. anything yes. else he's yes. stolen yes. from you. Yes. Relationships. Amen. Yes. Yes. Glory be to God. He got to bring it yes. back. Yes. God's favor restores what the enemy has stolen. Yes. The devil has to return what he's stolen from you. The life of Job is an excellent example of this. Job lost everything he had. But God. <laughs> well, God. <laughs> then he drove double for his trouble. Yeah, our God is a God of restoration. He's a God of increase. Yes, God's is. favor restores what the enemy has stolen and more. Amen. Exceeding abundantly above. Hallelujah. By the way, let me throw this in for free. Okay. This may be a revelation to some of you. The devil is not always the one that falls. That's right. Sometimes the enemy is in a me. All right. Okay? Sometimes we make bad choices. Mm-hmm. And as a result, bad things can happen in our lives. Right. God said in Deuteronomy 30, 19, I have said before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live. That's right. We have to make right choices and right decisions, and we do this by lining up our lives with the Word of God. We have to speak life and blessings to our lives, amen, Amen. so that we can walk in victory. Stop saying negative things about yourself. Stop saying I'll never have nothing. Stop saying I'm too fat, I'm too skinny, I'm too ugly, I'm too pretty. Stop it! (laughs) Say what God says about you, amen? God 
said you're more than a conqueror. Yeah. He said you're the head and not the tail. He said you've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly yeah. places. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Yeah. The word. Agree with God. Yeah. Yeah. Exodus the third chapter, verses 21 through 22, New King James says, And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and, I, and it shall be that when you go, you shall not go empty-handed. I would have been happy myself just to be free. But he was telling them, not only are you going to be free, but you're going to be wealthy. Amen. Mm -hmm. Verse 22. But every woman shall ask of her neighbor, namely of her who dwells near her house, articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing, and you shall put them on your sons and your daughters, so shall you plunder the Egyptians. Now, I'm going to stop right here because we have quite a bit more to go. And uh, we'll pick up uh, on this here in Exodus 3, 21, 22 on next week talking about the favor of God. If you want, you can go ahead and answer the questions in the back here uh, of your study guide. And we'll get a chance and we'll just go over those two next week. Okay? Right. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Take a few minutes to love on somebody. And we're going to get ready for morning worship. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what